I thought I'd preach to you a little bit about the thought that I had as I was reading the intro today. Venite. Come and listen, all ye that fear the Lord, and I will tell you the many things that our Lord hath done for my soul. It's a very beautiful thing to think about. To stop and think of all that He has done for your soul. Perhaps I even talked about this a little bit not long ago, but the value of a soul, what is it? Now, remember, we all of us, it seems, have a different value that we put on our soul. Well, we men and women and children, we don't see its true value. We cheapen it. We make it less than it's worth because what do we do? We sell it for some cheap pleasure, for some moment of pleasure or otherwise, something that we do against the commandments of God. The very soul that was purchased by the precious blood of the sacred heart, that's what the value of a soul is. It is worth the precious blood. And yet we take it. What God has purchased, He has purchased our soul His blood is like money in this case. He's purchased our soul. It is His property now. And yet, any time that we sin, we take back what's His and we sell it for a much cheaper price, a momentary pleasure, than what our soul is worth. That's how we humans tend to look at it. We think not much of it. But then, even the devils, Even the damned souls in hell understand the value of a soul. It's known that the devil will give whole kingdoms for the possession of one soul. If falling down, thou wilt adore me, he said to our Lord himself in the desert. If falling down, thou wilt adore me, I will give you all these kingdoms that you see. And it happens often that he does. But more often than not, perhaps, since he's the prince of lies, he doesn't give. Once you've given him your soul through sin, he doesn't hold up his end of the bargain. And if he does, the things that he gives you will at one time deceive you and abandon you. But the value of a soul in the sight of God, that's what's precious. I was thinking of this, especially in El Paso this past week, where I was giving Holy Communion, First Holy Communion, to a little girl there. How precious it is, a soul in the sight of God, that he would want to unite himself to a soul in Holy Communion, as he will for all of you here this evening. It is his desire to be united to your soul. How precious it is then. Your soul. But he thought of your soul. Now, don't look at the, your neighbor next to you and apply this sermon to them or to anyone else. Apply it to yourself. He has, from all eternity, known perfectly your soul. Remember, there was never a beginning with God. There will never be an end. And yet, from all eternity... He had your soul in his mind. And then when he created it, in order to make it so precious, he made it in his image and likeness. And then in baptism, when the waters were poured over your forehead, the Blessed Trinity made your soul his palace. He lives, the Blessed Trinity does, so truly there that it is truly his palace and he lives there as a friend and your duty is to converse with the blessed trinity who lives in your soul. And then whenever you have committed sin and expelled the blessed trinity through mortal sin, he has instituted the sacrament of penance in which through the priest's absolution, sanctifying grace comes back, and with it, the blessed Trinity dwells as well. 
And then, as if all this were not enough, God, right after Adam and Eve had sinned, promised to redeem us. And in the, in the perfect time, then the second person of the Blessed Trinity took on a human nature, was born in a poor little stable in Bethlehem. And why? Because our souls are so valuable and so precious in the sight of God. He became man because as God he could not suffer. He could not shed a tear. He could not weep. He could not shed his blood. He could not do that. Die on the cross and redeem us with his, with his precious blood. He couldn't suffer, in other words. And therefore, he became a little child so that he could grow up and then be crucified. Your soul is that valuable that God would do that. It sounds almost like a fairy tale, doesn't it? But a beautiful fairy tale. But it's no fairy tale. This is real. Come to me and I will tell you, it says in the entry, what wonderful things God has done for my soul. He has come down from heaven to earth for the sake of the soul. And that's what we're preparing for this Advent. So think during this Advent of the value of your soul and the wonderful things that Almighty God has done for it. And then prepare for Christmas Day. Not with all the gifts. Well, you, you'll do that too. That's fine. But prepare primarily spiritually. Fix your soul up. It's already worth so much. Now clean it up a bit. Make sure you make a good confession before Christmas and receive the sacraments. Make sure that you try to mortify yourself in some way during this Advent season and do a little extra praying as well to prepare your soul for the coming of Christ at Christmas. Because your soul, valuable as it is, is what our Lord esteems. And that is where he wants to be. That is the inn in which he finds great delight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.